Come, let's go into the studio. I'll show you some new pictures. But please don't ask me to explain them. I just don't think it's possible. I paint. I can only describe this as a drive. Dorothea Tanning was a surrealist artist um, who enjoyed a, a very long career, a 70 year career as a, a painter and a writer and a sculptor. She was born in 1910 in Galesburg, Illinois, where she famously said nothing happened but the wallpaper. And she uh, lived a long life, up to 101, dying in New York. She was very glamorous. She dressed in beautiful clothing. She seemed very coiffe, very elegant. Max Ernst befriended Dorothy Tanning uh, in the Christmas of 1942, and Dorothy Tanning in her memoirs describes him as her Christmas present. Um, before he left her studio, he asked her if she played chess. Um, a romance effectively blossomed over the game of chess and over surrealism and their shared circle. And by 1946, they were married, and married um, curiously in a, a joint wedding ceremony in Hollywood with Man Ray and Juliet Browner. As a couple, um, working together in a house they built in, in Sedona made of wood without sort of heat and running water or anything fancy. Um, they persisted to just totally immerse themselves in their art. Arizona. You could almost cut my life in two. Before and after Sedona, Arizona. There are several motifs which recur in, in Tanning's work. Doors, uh, sunflowers, fabulous large sunflowers, um, which was the only uh, flower that could grow in Sedona, Arizona, where she was living, and little girls. Behind the door, or I should say the doors, always another door. And in um, perhaps one of our best known works, Eine kleine Nachtmusik of 1943, we see um, two little girls in a corridor. And it's not a house, but it's actually a hotel space. Because Eine kleine Nachtmusik refers to Mozart's a serenade. It can be translated as uh, a little light music, a little night music, yes. The Surrealists always said revolution occurred at night and not at day in dream, not in the conscious life. And these little girls inhabit, I think, that very strong sense of the power of dream to actually make us see the world differently. How many women sit in front of the mirror like this, dreaming of glorious looks? Here's a quote from Dorothea. Keep your eye on your inner world and keep away from ads, idiots, and movie stars. It isn't that she didn't like movie stars, it's simply keep your eye on the ball, pay attention to your own dreams, to your own visions. By the mid-1960s, Dorothy Tanning and Max Ernst are living in France, and she said herself, One day I got fed up with the turpentine, really fed up and started making stuffed figures, all in the sewing machine. I set myself terrible goals, terrible challenges. And then she produces what she herself described in a letter as perhaps her most surrealist work, which was the Hotel du Pavot, Chambre de Son Deux, which is an installation where we have um, a lot of our ideas coming into their own as a hotel room. Um, and in this room, it's not any hotel room, it's where we have figures, again, escaping the walls, ripping the, the wallpaper. We have furniture, which is before our eyes metamorphosing into limbs, legs, thighs, very dark. It's quite uncanny and macabre. Some people said they won't last. 
too bad they aren't hard. Things like that. They might as well have said, too bad they aren't dead. And why was this? Well, it was because life and love themselves are soft and they, they don't um, live forever either. So that fragility was something she was trying to capture in the sculptures. She was, I think, basically a very happy person. I think she was loved as a child. I think she was extremely happy in her marriage. Um, and she was a lot of fun to be with. As far as, as far as those images that she paints, I don't see them as particularly sinister. I see them as, as dreams. And we all have scary dreams. And it's what you make out of your scary dreams and how you resolve those scary dreams as far as I'm concerned. Art has always been the raft onto which we climb to save our sanity. I don't see a different purpose for it now. Her art was how she made sense of the world she saw around her.